Aloha. You're watching F5 On Demand. We're here in San Francisco for RSA 2014. I'm Senior Technical Marketing Manager Peter Silva, and I'm here with Corey Marshall, who's a security systems architect. Hey, nice to see you, Corey. Nice to meet you. How's it going, man? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Pretty good. So Corey and I were just chatting, and you know how I like to just fire up the camera when we get a good idea. The hamsters start running. <laughs> so one of the things Corey was mentioning is that now you do a lot of traveling and, and speak to various groups about security, and one of the questions that he was mentioning that you get often is integration. How, how do these customers integrate big IP solutions, F5 solutions, into some of the current solutions that they have? And the answer is? APIs. APIs. Right. So, it is, it, especially as I walk around RSA, what you're finding is that everyone has an API um, these days. And so, one of the enduring challenges with security is that we have solutions and it's fantastic te technology. However, it usually operates in a silo all by itself. And the promise of APIs is that we can bridge the security technologies together and really create a situation where the sum of the 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 sum of the parts is greater than any individual component. Um, so really, APIs are that glue that are or creating opportunity for for organizations to both partner with one another and for our customers to better utilize um, and leverage their investment in the security architectures that they have. And now F5 has a number of APIs, which we kind of have up on the board. Can you go through these real quick and where they're applicable in certain situations? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the the first and um, in, in the and the the first kind of programmability tier that most people are familiar with are I rules. What I rules are, are allow you to control um, the the data plane, if you will. So, be able to manage, flexibly manage and manipulate traffic as it's flowing through um, through our box. So, for example, in in keeping with the API example, um, say you have a REST interface. Um, for, for a third party service and on connection to say F5's firewall, our AFM module, we can trigger an eye roll that can go out and make a RESTful service call to make a policy decision about whether or not we should allow traffic, right? And we can do that kind of thing very dynamically. So, so we have a situation where we have a layer four connection coming in and we're making a layer, layer seven call to a third party service to make a decision. Um, so that's an example of integration interoperability that frankly wasn't present um, even a few years ago in, in any third party solution. And then what about some of the others? We got uh, iControl, iCall, iApps? Absolutely, so uh, we'll, we'll start from the other end. So okay. iCall is, um, I mentioned iRules um, applying to the data plane. iCall is really applying to the control plane, right? So iCall will, will allow you to do things like, for example, on uh, an action, so we see a, a, a policy violation uh, with our web application security module and being able to trigger a TCP dump on that traffic, ah. right, or, or trigger a, an underlying script that runs on the operating system. So really that's what I, I call does for you is allow you to control and orchestrate the control plane. Got it. So then there's iControl and uh, iControl, what that allows you to do is control the management plane, so the actual configuration on our appliance. So with iControl, you can do things like, um, for example, if you have a passive analytic system and it's running in a virtual environment, and when, when that system becomes overburdened, maybe you want to stand up additional virtual instances of that. And when you do that, you also need to put them behind an application delivery um, pool, if you will. So we can you can trigger um, uh, uh, and I control RESTful call to the big IP to add additional members to the pool and it's kind of to have more automated orchestration of the services that you're delivering in the environment. That's pretty cool. So a lot of it is, I mean, you know, that whole software defined theme that's going crazy in the industry is, is kind of along those lines, right? Absolutely. You know, everything being um, going towards a, a software defined architecture. So, you know, people aren't manually going in and pushing buttons and, and you know, plugging, uh, plumbing the individual components together. We define um, interfaces, if you will, between the different components and the different pieces of technology plug into those interfaces to perform the full service chain, if you will, or orchestration of deployment or even security response. And so what are some of the current examples that we have with you know, some of our partnerships, the, the API integration that we have? Absolutely, so um, probably most prevalent 
or most pertinent to the to the audience here at RSA is um, our integration in with SourceFire. So really having the IPS be able to sit out of band from the traffic, but affect blocking actions, still be able to take IPS-like actions um, via via API integration with the F5 appliance. So you know, really, you were able to both scale and and make much more effective that deployment and insert it to an existing traffic stream without uh, major changes to a network environment. And so really a lot of the benefits it seems like is, as you were mentioning earlier, the, the varying silos, organizations now can kind of collapse those silos into more um, functionality points or service points maybe is probably a better way to define it. Uh, this is the service that's occurring for, for these applications that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's really the, 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 um, the explosion in the number of APIs that are available between not only our, our solutions, but um, other solutions throughout um, the, the, the vendors and companies here at RSA um, really allow organizations to, you know, to break down those silos of technologies that um, work um, in, in, the, in their own space, but don't communicate with the rest of the environment or other solutions that you have and invested in, and so you end up in this, with a situation where you can achieve uh, more of a layered defense, right? So if if you're considering defense in depth, I have all these security solutions ranging from firewalls to you know malware sandboxes, and none of those things communicate with each other. That's really that's really not defense in depth. But once you have these solutions actually communicating, talking to each other, and able to take context and action um, based upon information from other solutions in your environment, now you're achieving true layered and layered and defense in depth. Nice. Excellent examples, by the way, Corey. So there you have it, a little bit more about, we were not arguing before, but we were discussing, <laughs> I'm like, I got this great marketing term, big IP programmability. And Corey's like, no, 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 it's integration. It's API, it's integration. <laughs> yeah. So maybe Don't we both, the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your time, Corey. Always Thank fun chatting with you. So. For Eric behind the lens, dude, you've been a great help this week. For Good Buddy Corey, I'm Peter, and oh, ooh, I got you on that one, didn't I? We're with F5 Networks. All Thanks right. for watching.